So we'll just start with the melody here. Uh, we'll use the uh, square 50 uh, for the higher version of the melody. And what I'll do is I'll come in here, I'll put this in uh, track one here, and I'll come in here to unlock the uh, note entry. And uh, as May showed you in the first video, you can select uh, the rate in which the cursor moves after you enter a note. Uh, this melody, I'm going to start with a two, and so I'm going to be putting them in every other ticker, and I'll just put in something very simple real quick. Okay, just a nice little quick melody there. And uh, just to kind of understand the numbers that have been put in here, uh, the numbers on the left, uh, or the letters on the left here, correspond to the pitches on the keyboard. The, the next number next to the letter, which are all fours and threes here, are the octave. So C3 up to B3, and then C4 up to B4. So that'll indicate the letter as well as the octave. Now if we had come in and wanted to put uh, and I'll just do this really quick for an example um, as an effect. I'll switch this to one. If we wanted to have one of the uh, black keys in here, the way it'll show up is as a lowercase, and it's always going to be uh, a sharp or a raised pitch. So if you see lowercase f, that would be like an f sharp. Um, they won't put in a g flat there. So anytime you use one of the black keys, it will be lowercase, and it will be a raised pitch for the capital letter just to its left. So now that I've got that little figuration in there, I'll just go ahead and put in a G4 in this melody. Now for the uh, second primary pulse channel with the other square wave, I'm going to select 12.5. And uh, you'll see here that when I put in these numbers, they're going to be green as well, but the next column will say 0, 1, which refers to generator 1 here, whereas the first column I used was generator 2 where the number two shows up there. So for this one, I'm going to put in a little bit of a counter melody. Uh, it'll be a little bit slower. Now, what I'm going to put in next is a bass line. So I'll select the triangle. And uh, the triangle, of course, is great for bass lines. Sometimes you need to take the volume up a little bit on the triangle because it's a little bit softer. I'm also going to raise the release time just so it sustains a little bit longer. And I'll come in here to the second channel. I'll put in unlock here. And I'll just do something really basic here. to just customize the length on just a few places, for example, one of these held notes here, uh, what you can do is uh, come in here and if you unlock the top, you can see where it says off. And what that do is it will cut off that note so that it doesn't sustain nearly as long. Uh, this gives you a little bit more uh, rhythmic variety uh, than just having it sustain until the next particular uh, note comes in. Okay, so that sounds pretty good. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to put in a little bit of a drum beat. Uh, and we just need to differentiate a couple different things. I'm going to start with uh, something that sounds a little bit like a snare drum. And uh, we'll need to play around with this for a little bit to get exactly the sound we're looking for. It's going to be too long. Uh, so what I'm going to do, if I take the sustain off, it's almost too short. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the sustain back on. And I'm going to bring this release and this attack down. And that's pretty good for right here. I'll go with the C6. That sounds pretty good for right now. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to put this on every second and fourth beat. And you can see there's four subdivisions under each of these. Uh, I like to think of this as a measure of 4-4 four, four, or common time, if you're familiar with that, where each of these is a beat with uh, four subdivisions. 
So I'm going to come in on every second and fourth beat and go ahead and enter C6. Let's see how that sounds. And you'll, what you'll notice is that sustain is way too long, but remember, we can very easily take that off and just put that in after each of these. Okay, that sounds pretty good, but not really that much excitement when it comes to percussion. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, I want to add another kind of sound to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create another noise uh, generator. And I'm going to go ahead and give this one a similar color to it. I'll just go with that red or pinkish color here. And I'll go ahead and call this noise 2. If you end up using one for snare and one for another effect, you could always change that name if you'd like. I need to make sure that this noise, of course, is linked to our output. So now we have a fresh palette to work with here. Right now it's set to triangle, so we'll take this to noise. And this time I'm going to actually turn the sustain off. You can see, unless we put a release on here, we're not going to get any sound. There you go. Put a little bit of release on it. And this is really good uh, if you turn the sustain off and use a very short release. It's really good for sort of like a, a hi-hat sound. And then this will be in the same uh, noise channel. And I'm just going to fill in this pattern a little bit. that we want to keep up with this style pretty consistently and so one of the quick ways we can do that is just to simply um, come in here and uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, right click or control quick select uh, copy pattern and paste pattern and so now we have a second pattern that looks identical and we can just kind of come in here and change a few things bit different than the pattern that we had in the first one so I'll come back and we'll listen to the whole thing now notice that I hit the P play button to just play that one pattern but now I'm gonna hit the regular play so it'll play both of the patterns and now we've got two different sections here now if we know we're gonna come back to this section later in the piece and we uh, want any changes that we make in these patterns uh, to be reflected. Um, one of the things we can do now that we've altered this one here, uh, we can come into this uh, icon here and say, well, now that I've made a change to this one, I don't want to get confused as to which one it is. So what I'm going to come in here is I'm just going to put in a little bit of a extra change here. I'll close it and you can see now it looks distinctly different from this pattern. And let's say that I know that later in the piece I'm going to have these exact two patterns again and I'm going to keep them exactly the same. Uh, what you can do is come in here and select both of them and uh, right click and instead of selecting copy patterns, select clone patterns. And what this does, if you can see the little lines here, is it will clone them and I'll say I'm going to come back to this a little bit later in the piece. And that way, any changes that I make on this first utterance will automatically be changed to any clones that are done later. That way, if you come in later and you make a couple tweaks to your melody, um, you don't have to go back in and, and change that later in the piece. It will, the cloning will automatically bring that over. And this is helpful to, when you're differentiating between copying. Copying and pasting is great for saving time um, when you're going to be making a few changes, but cloning is really the best if you want to have the exact same section or pattern come back later. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.